I'm John D. Liu. I've been traveling throughout the world to learn about how ecosystems function, seeking a path to a sustainable future. On this trip, I've begun to study and document the Inner Niger Delta in Mali. Although I've been many times to the continent, this is my first visit to this part of West Africa. I'm immediately struck by the compelling beauty of the people and the extreme ecological importance of the land. Traveling north from Mali's capital, Bamako, and following the Niger River, I find a complex ecological system with a very important role in regulating the Earth's hydrological cycle, weather patterns, and climate. There are patches of wetlands where rich plant diversity and bird life are evident. As we travel further north, I notice that the vegetation cover begins to thin. I'm told that much of the natural tree cover has been lost over centuries and millennia from burning wood for fuel and clearing the land for agriculture. This has caused a continuous loss of fertility and moisture and has made the simple traditional agriculture practiced here a precarious livelihood. we begin to see patches of bare, exposed earth, the result of large-scale herding of domestic animals. The government, with international development assistance, has sought to regulate the river with several dams. The reasoning behind building the dams is to control flooding to generate electricity, and to provide irrigation to increase agricultural productivity. Below the dams are rice paddies, banana and sugarcane fields. These benefits are fairly easy to quantify, and for some, seem compelling justification for building the dam. Huh? But many scientists have questioned these large engineering solutions because they massively alter the natural river system. The dams reflect the assumption that the productivity from agriculture is more valuable than the natural biological diversity or the ability to naturally regulate the complex interactions of the wetlands, the weather, and the climate. This is increasingly important because yet more dams are planned. As I begin to see the vital role that the Inner Niger Delta plays, it becomes clear that the decisions made concerning more dams will not only affect the people of the region, but the whole of North Africa and the world. For someone interested in how Earth systems function, there is much to learn in Mali. Every year a dramatic change comes to the Inner Niger Delta. Each year in the rainy seasons, the waters flowing from the Ghanaian highlands steadily rise to flood the lowlands below. The level typically rises as high as six meters over a vast area. The people who live in the Delta, by long habit, know approximately what to expect. They prepare themselves and put all their belongings onto boats to seasonally migrate to higher ground. The people depend on the floods arriving as expected to bring back the waters after the dry season to nurture the thirsty plants, to provide habitat for fish, and to provide the rhythm as well as the source of their lives. The flooded delta is a fascinating and unique ecosystem. 
It takes me some time to realize what huge amounts of water are present. The delta is a nesting ground for precious, rare, migratory birds. Specially adapted plants like these borgo grasses provide habitat for the fish that traditionally provided employment for many and fed the people. These flood forests are made up of a very special subspecies of the acacia tree, Acacia kirki. These trees spend part of the year submerged and part of the year on dry land. During the flood season, these trees drink deeply, absorbing water that remains in the local system during the drier periods. Over generations, the relentless desire to extract something that can be converted to income has vastly reduced the area covered by these trees. As these specialized habitats have been lost, the hydrological function has decreased. Many people who have never been here may perhaps be forgiven for assuming that it is inevitable for ecosystems to be depleted. But those who study this know that there is little or no biophysical reason why this ecosystem must continue to degrade. In Mali, there is even evidence of trees of gigantic size. This suggests that natural vegetation was at one time enormously larger than today. I begin to wonder, would it be possible to restore this and what this would mean for climate control? Actively restoring vegetation here would certainly improve the lives of the people by providing them with locally and globally important work. Restoration would improve hydrological retention in a fragile part of Africa, reducing the spread of the desert, helping to control extreme weather events, and reducing human impact on the climate by naturally sequestering carbon. Mali's population of just 14 million people live in an area of 1,200,000 square kilometers. This is less than the population of Los Angeles, living in an area almost twice the size of France. From traditional reckoning, Mali is one of the poorest countries on the earth, near the bottom of many of the United Nations human development indicators. The degradation and the poverty in Mali seem to be the result of a failure to value the ecosystem function. To insist that fragile but important ecological zones have no value unless they produce goods and services bought and sold by the global economy is simply wrong. Given the risks of human-induced climate change, this is an enormous mistake. Here on the inner Niger Delta in Mali, it's possible to see the effects of valuing productivity over function. We fail to understand that the Earth's water, its unique species of life, and its climate are regulated from places just like this. When these systems are fully functional, everybody on Earth benefits. But if we fail to value these essential functions, the local people are forced to degrade them just to survive. What's the value of the Earth's water, or biodiversity, or climate regulation? How could we consign to poverty those of us whose task it is to protect these essential functions? There is much to learn about how the Earth's ecosystems function in the inner Niger Delta, and we have only begun to scratch the surface. But it is clear that the hydrological, weather, and climate regulatory functions alone in the inner Niger Delta are not only extremely valuable, but are absolutely necessary for human survival. I'm looking forward to learning more on my next visit to Mali 
and seeing how efforts to expand understanding and restoration of this unique and important region are progressing.